Hi everybody, my name is Blake Perez. I'm an APAC sales manager here at Intopology, and I wanted to take the opportunity for this Intop Live to discuss one of these workflows that um, I had been thinking about and had a chance to put together around how we make inserts for clamshell packaging. Um, and so I want to give you a little bit of background for, for this workflow and kind of what it does for us. Um, this whole idea kind of started, I was playing a game of chess with a friend and we had this Nightmare Before Christmas chess set. Um, really interesting chess set if you're a fan of the movie. Um, but what, what kind of stuck out to me was the way all of these pieces are inset here into this vacuum formed uh, holder. And so if we look a little more closely at this, um, all of these insets are sort of custom formed to the piece itself. And you may not be able to see it from the image, but each piece really only fits in in a certain way, right? So it's, it's meant to display the part looking out. Um, it secures the piece. It's really conformal to the unique geometry of, of these individual figures. And, and as you can see, these figures are a lot more intricate than a standard chess set. Um, and you may have also seen uh, similar types of insets in toys, like action figures holding the action figure in a certain way in the packaging. And my intuition here is that these inserts maybe take quite a while to design, and it'd be really interesting to be able to design them automatically. Um, you could create molds for even really bespoke um, action figures. Let's say you're printing action figures and every single one is different. How do you create the mold for that quickly? And I wanted to show how this can be done in InTop platform um, in a quick and repeatable way. So, so what you see here on the screen is this workflow that I've already put together. Um, and so we can see that we have a T-Rex action figure here that I want to create this mold for. So let's have a look at, at sort of what's going on in this workflow to actually achieve that final part, right? So, so we have our input part. And the first thing I kind of do is, is take a couple of bounding boxes so we can see the space that we're living in. And, and some of the inputs here that I have in the top are, are this Z padding. So I have five millimeters, so it's going to create a, a five millimeter gap here at the top and bottom between the edges of the, the insert and the action figure. Um, and then I do that same thing in X, X and Y. So in the Y direction and in the X direction. I mean, we can change those pretty quickly. Um, I'll do that a bit later to show you how that works. Um, and one of the first things, so we're going to do is we're going to generate that mold volume based on that bounding box. So this is kind of the space that we're working in. And what we need to do is we actually need to create sort of a support volume. So we're using a different feature. This is actually our feature to get the required support area when we're looking at additively manufactured components. Um, so this is going to generate here in a second. Um, and what we're really doing is we're actually finding sort of this region. First thing we're doing is we're finding this region um, kind of where any overhang violates 90 degrees, right? So um, it's almost like extruding this whole part upwards. Um, and we have all that region underneath. Um, as you can see in the final part, there's a bit of a draft outwards, right? So if we were kind of thinking about how we would use this part, if we only use this support volume, it'd be really tricky to get that part in and out, very tight clearance. Um, so what we do is we also create a draft. Um, and so that's, you know, it doesn't look perfect right now, but this is really going to be used as a cutting tool in the final part. Um, this sort of drafts outwards so that um, we have easy access with our hands or however we're going to kind of pull this part out of the packaging, right? So, so we're able to do that. And, and what I want to do first um, is basically Boolean union or attach this volume to the original part. And we'll do that. We'll do that nicely. So now we have kind of this single body. Change the color of that so it's a little more clear. Right, so we have this single body here. Um, and this is the part that we're going to subtract 
from that mole volume that I showed earlier. You know, one of the things I might want to do as well is, is kind of smoothen that out. We don't want sort of sharp or jagged edges in this vacuum form mold, so this smoothen function is able to, to take care of that for me. Um, I've got my mold volume here. I've rounded the edges of that as well. And so then all I have to do is subtract this guy, in which I'll change the color again so it's clear again. Um, we're going to subtract this from that mold volume, and what we end up with is that mold that we have here. There's a couple more things that I need to do. Um, I need to shell this part. So if, if we look at the original, and let's cut it out, it's, it's solid. Um, whereas if we um, look at just the shell here, we can see that now that part is hollow. And that's really what we need. The last step is that we just need to cut off this bottom. And so that's cut off with a with a plane and a subtraction step. Let's see, so... And so now we have our final part, which is our mold. And, and the great thing about this, right, is it doesn't really matter what part you throw into this workflow, right? So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to put a just a simple sphere. And it's going to take a little while to recalculate everything. You can see that the bounding box has changed. Um, but now, you know, here's the same workflow on a sphere. You know, if, if you have um, something that you were trying to package out. Now, this is a very simple example. This is actually where I started creating the workflow on this sphere, so it's much easier for me to understand and develop. Um, but, you know, let's, let's look at something a little bit different. Um, so I have, I showed earlier this T-Rex. Now here's the same T-Rex, but with my face superimposed on top of it, right? So I can, I can bring this in here um, and I can make this my input. So I'm going to do that. And again, this will take a short while to, to generate, but as you can see, the, the bounding box has already kind of recalculated itself. These different su support functions are running. Um, and then what we'll end up with is that sort of vacuum form mold for this figure. And so it doesn't matter the type of geometry that you put into this workflow. What you'll get out is that um, packaging insert. Um, now there's a few more things that we could do. We could take that geometry and we could create the actual molds for it. That's a simple boolean subtract, boolean add step. Um, nonetheless, this is what we have. And so that part is done. So again, what we have is that same that same workflow, that same vacuum form insert with a very different geometry. Um, and so, you know, what I'm hoping to show here is the reusability of these workflows that can be done and created in InTop. Um, and it opens up the possibility to really design, I think, unique components where the geometry might be changing from user to user, um, certainly applications and in, in, in packaging, as mentioned but also you know, the medical space, uh, consumer product space. So really interested to see what people uh, do with this workflow and progress it forward. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. This file should be also available for download from our website. Thank you.